Welcome to SouthernSwagOutdoors.com. The title of today's tip is the right tools for the job. First of all, I have to start off with a disclaimer. I am not an instructor and I'm not teaching you how to use firearms. But what I am is a big advocate of gun safety and I do believe that a gun in the woods is better than a gun on the streets. Nobody steal that <laughs> slogan. I'm going to use that later. But a gun in the woods is better than a gun on the streets. You know, we've been getting a lot of questions on what to use if you're going to go deer hunting in South Carolina. And I know that might sound like to some people like a crazy question, but a lot of people don't know. So today we're going to try to answer some of those questions and uh, just give you a little information to keep you interested, just in case you are thinking about getting out there to go hunting. But what I would recommend if you're planning on buying a firearm is that you read that manual. Read your firearm manual, learn all that you can about that firearm, and take a class on that firearm if it's available. Also, I would, I would recommend that you take a hunter's education course, which is available in South Carolina and recommended if you're under a certain age in South Carolina. Last but not least, I would recommend that you get your South Carolina DNR Rules and Regulation book. What that's going to do is keep you from breaking the law, first of all. And in that book, it tells you what kind of equipment you can use or can't use to hunt deer and other animals and the fish and all that. But today we're going to focus on deer hunting. So hopefully today you'll be able to learn something again. I'm just giving you some information. I'm not teaching you anything, but hopefully to keep you engaged and uh, make you want to get there, get out there in the woods. Thank you. So that's why I got doors.com. Welcome to SouthernSwagOutdoors.com. Uh, we'll be getting a couple questions on what kind of firearms or what ways you can do hunt in South Carolina. So today we're going to be answering some of those questions. Again, this is not a safety course or operational course or tutorial, tutorial or anything like that. I'm just showing you the different types of guns. If you're going to use these firearms, I suggest you get some training or take a class and most of all, read the instruction manuals. Uh, later on, we're going to try to give you a demonstration on how they work. So the first question is, what do you use to deer hunt in South Carolina? Uh, you can use archery or even firearms. Today we're going to show you firearms, which is called primitive weapons also. Out of the firearms, the only thing you can use is a rifle, which this is, a 36 caliber or, or bigger, or a shotgun, which these are. These two are 12 gauge, this is a 14, which is not allowed. It's just a pretty gun. I got it on the table. I really like that gun, which you can see. Or a uh, shotgun of 20 gauge or larger. So this is a 12 gauge. With the shotguns, the lower the gauge, the bigger the gauge, like, so the lower the number. So a 20 gauge is smaller than the 12 gauge. So the lower the number, the bigger the gauge. So this is a 12 gauge, you got your 20 gauge, your 16 gauge, the sweet 16, and then your 12 gauge that you're gonna hunt with down here. So another question you have is, when you go into the store, what should, what should you ask for when you wanna start deer hunting? You're gonna use a rifle. You can also use a muzzle loader too, but that's not your typical gun that people use down here. It's gonna be the rifle or the shotgun. So if you're gonna use your rifle, like I said, 36 caliber or bigger. The traditional sizes down here are 25 off six, 30 off six, and a 30 30 that people use, or people that I hope to use, my cousins and my family. The most traditional or popular is the 30 off six, which this is. So if you wanna go in there, you know, you try to look for a deer gun. Hopefully the person that's at the counter or the sport, I see go to a sport in this place. Uh, they're educated and know about the rifles. And uh, I would suggest you, get, you start with a 30 off six or 25 off six or even a 30 30. Not a brand type that depends upon you. Okay, but a shotgun, if you're gonna use a shotgun, I would suggest you get it again. I like the 12 gauge, you know, this is a semi automatic, this is a bolt action. But uh, I would go with a 12 gauge shotgun. You can use the pump, you know, it really don't depend on what type, you know what I'm saying. But um, I would go with the 12 gauge shotgun, and again, the brand would depend on your preference. But did, but again, you can use a 20 gauge or anything larger. Another question I have is how much you guys pay to spin on a firearm? I would say 700 would be safe. It might be a little cheaper, it might be a little more, but I would say right in that range right here. This gun right here, this is a beautiful gun. It's a um, New England Mossberg 30 out 6. A Mossberg 30 out 6 uh, Patriot. It's going to have it on the side here, on the side of your rifle. This is a good rifle, wood grain. 
you know, you pay $600 for the gun. Most of the time with the rifle, you're going to get a scope. We talk about that thing. You get a good scope between 150 and all the way up to $1,000. But this one right here was like 200 so you get a good scope for that price. Uh, with the shotguns, it depends. You can get a good shotgun, i say between 250 and up to 600 in between that range, 250 to 700. So it depends on what brands you want. But I say come with 700 or plan to use 700 to still get your good gun. Okay, another question we get is like, what what types of uh, ammo do I use when I'm out there hunting? This is the uh, cartridge or the bullet for the rifle, for the 30 out six. Uh, you wanna make sure that the uh, the caliber of the bullet matches the rifle all the time. They have to match. This is a 30 out 6 bullet for a 30 out 6 rifle. You go to a store, you want a 25 out 6 cartridges of bullets for a 25 out 6 gun. 30 30, same thing. Uh, I use 180 grain, which is the mass of the projectile in the cartridge, which is this piece right here. So the bigger the grain, the bigger the mass. So I like the 180 grain, it's heavier grain. And I like the Remington Core lot. They have different grains, which is the size of the mass, and they have different brands. But as long as your caliber of the bullet matches the caliber of the rifle, you're okay. Okay, now with the shotgun. With the shotgun, it's the same concept. The gauge of your shell has to match the gauge of the gun. So this is a 12 gauge gun. We need a 12 gauge shell. You can see that on the back of the shell itself, just like on the cartridge. Or in the box when you buy them, when you go in the store, you tell them you have a 12 gauge shotgun, you need to have 12 gauge shells. Again, in South Carolina, it either has to be 20 gauge or bigger. You can't buy anything up 20 gauge to shoot or have to deal with. So either 20, 16, or 12. So one of the, one of the most important things with the shell is that you want to buy buckshot. They sell small game, they sell target load, but you want to buy buckshot when you go in there to buy a shot, uh, shotgun shell to deal with either single lock buck. A double lock book. Uh, the size of the shell come between two and three quarter inches to three and a half inches. To tell that or what kind of shell you need to use on your gun. A lot of times, always you treat your gun like it's loaded. It's gonna be on the side of your barrel. Right here it has two and three quarter inch shells. But I done shot my gun enough to know I can put three inch shells in and it'll work. But read your manual and know what sizes you can use. And also. In your manual for each gun, it'll tell you what size you can use. Now, the reason I like to use a three inch when I'm hunting is because you have more balls or a bigger load. With a shell, you're not shooting one projectile. You're going to have a load inside of the shell with your small lead balls and uh, a butt shot that bigger balls for a squirrel and small game that's smaller balls. But the longer the shell, the more balls you have. So, the better chance you have of hitting your target. So, once again, the gauge of the shotgun shell. Pass match, engage, and be gun. Okay, last question I have, or that was asked, was how do you know what, which gun to use for what hunt? So when to use which gun? With the rifle, you want to use this in a um, in a position where you're like in a steel hunt, either in a stand or either in a blind, where you're still hunting, you're sitting there, you wait for the deer to come into a certain area, the deer stops, you're going to put your scope on them, which is this right here. Or you can hunt, hunt iron sight, which is without the scope. You're able to take a shot on that deer while he's standing still. That's the most optimal use for this gun right here. Or when you're in that situation where you're still hunting. We'll, we'll tell you about that a little bit too. But that's when you need to stand or blind, you want to use the rifle. The shotgun. The shotgun can be used in the same situation where you're still hunting, either in a blind or either in a stand or a climber. Either way, this can be used for the same situation because a lot of people don't have a respect for a shotgun like that or think that they can reach that far as, you know, won't reach as far as a rifle. But from up to 80 yards, man, you can knock a deer down with this thing. I mean, he, he's done for. And that's a long way. That's all going to some football field. Wait, I see a hundred yards, maybe. You know, so he gets shot and hit him right. But 80 yards, you put him a guarantee if you hit him right with this gun. So you can use this in the stand. While you're still hunting, but when you're pushing dogs, or when you're running dogs, this is what you're gonna use. This is what people use as the shotgun. Because you can use this gun right here. Always treat the gun like it's loaded when the deer is on the move. So what you wanna do is grab your gun, have your gun, and put it down on it, and when you shoot again, 
you shoot the um shell, it shoots a spread pattern. There's a whole bunch of balls in here again. Buckshot shoots a spread pattern. So when the deer crosses you, he's gonna be on the ground because the dogs are pressing him. You're able to shoot and get it doesn't have to be an accurate shot like the scope, but you're able to get a good shot and hit the deer somewhere in the body. And more than likely, if you hit him, one of those balls in here are gonna hit one of those uh major front major um organs in his body. And um, you're able to put the deer down and harvest the deer. But um, so hopefully you you know you learn the difference. This right here could be used for both situations. This right here is primarily for still hunting. Now this right here is no shotgun, 12 gauge shotgun. Again, it can be used for both uh both situations. Again, 12 gauge caliber need the master shell. Need to use buckshot. This is the bolt action shotgun. Treat, always treat it like it's loaded, it's on safety. This is a rifle. Both of them are bolt action. That's when you gotta know your guns, know what you're dealing with. But this is a shotgun. This is a rifle. This takes shells, this takes cartridges, but they look so similar. That's why I brought it up here. It even, even has a clip like this gun has. A lot of people probably ain't never seen a gun like this, but it is a shotgun. And you won't see it on the gun because it's so old and wore out, you know. All the writing and stuff is written. It's off the gun, but you have to know your guns in. I'm going to tell you a little secret. This is guaranteed, but the little bead on the tip right there, that's usually on shotguns. Got it on this one right here. This one right here, which is shotgun 2 little 14. We'll talk about that later on another episode. But I like this. I always treat it like it's loaded. Safety is on. I know it's empty. I always treat it like it's loaded. But the reason I bought this one to show you is because of the similarity between the two guns. That's why you need to know your gun. Get in your manual, read your manual. And um, this is one of my favorite guns. One of my first guns is an old gun. And I kept my biggest deal with this gun. Me and my son was hunting one day. I put him in my stand and I took the climb and just went up the tree with the gun. It was dark. I, you know, you couldn't really tell how the land was laid out around me. I knew where I hunt, but you couldn't see. And I just went on up and when the sun came up, that big deer walked up, big buck. And I got a good shot on with this, with this gun right here. Killed my first deer. And my biggest deer, this old gun right here. But again, I'm just showing you what we use out there in the field, you know. Just give me a little information to keep you interested. I'm not a tutor. I'm not a guide right now. I'm not an um, instructor, instructor on guns, any of that. If you need to take a class, get your class, you know, on guns. I would recommend that on firearms. You know, I just use rifle. I don't need any small handguns, but... And um, get into your manual. And also, get your um, South Carolina DNR rules regulation book. And just, I say study, which sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, if you just read through it every now and then, you know, you'll learn a lot. So hopefully you learn something there again. I'm not instructing anything. I just want to give you some information. And always, always be safe for guns. All right. So this way I got doors.com. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something from today's tip or found something interesting. If you did, please like the video and comment below. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Southern Swag Outdoors. Southern Swag Outdoors via YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And also check us out at southernswagoutdoors.com. We love y'all and we thank y'all.